The first type of claim we look at is where we're given a claim with no comparison. This could be something like the majority of dot 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 or 55% of people dot dot dot. The rule of thumb formula for the no comparison 95% margin of error is this here, 1 over square root n, where n is the sample size. This formula only works when the percentage in the sample is between 30% and 70%. Outside of this range, the margin of error is smaller. You cannot use this formula if the percentage is outside of this range. Let's have a look at a simulation to see where this comes from. Any time you take a sample, it's never going to be exactly the same as the population. If we have a look at this, we've said that the percentage in the population is going to be 55%, and we're going to take a random sample of 100 people from this population. We can see in this first sample that I took, 54 of the people, or 54% because we've got 100, came out with that category, and the remaining 46% did not. If I take another sample, we can see that this time it came out at 51. What I can do is I can keep taking samples and we can see them coming down here on the bottom. So that 53% lines up with the circle there at 53%. What I can do is I can get it to come along and take a number of these automatically. What I'll do is I'll get this going quite fast now. We can see that this distribution of our samples is slowly appearing. Now what this does is this simulator does a thousand samples. What we can see is that from our 55% in the population, 95% of our things have been between 45 and 65%. To get the margin of error, that's the difference between the middle and the edges, so that comes out as 10% from our simulation, and that nicely matches what we'd expect to see from the rule of thumb. What I can do is if I make this happen instantaneously instead of coming through. I can say if I take a sample of 40, we can see that that's jumped down to here. So 40 is in the middle and we've got a range of 9.5. So that's still fairly close to our 10%. Now if I drop this down to 30%, we can see that our margin of error is starting to get quite a bit smaller. And this is why we can only use it between our 30 and 70%. If I was to make this something like 10% instead, we can see that this margin of error is quite a lot smaller. In fact, it's half the size. This is why it's really important we only use the rule of thumb for between 30 and 70%. Because likewise, if I was to make this 90%, we can see that the margin of error is also quite small at the top. If we bring this back down to 55%, which is where we started with, and we have a look at what happens with our sample size. So at the moment I've got a sample size of 100. If I was to drop this down to 10, we can see that our margin of error is much bigger. It's much more spread out. If I was to make it back to 100, it's smaller, and 1,000, it's smaller again, and 10,000, we can see that it gets even smaller again, because as our sample size gets bigger, we can be more confident that it's going to be representative of the population. If you want to have a play around with any of this yourself, you're more than welcome to. There's a link in the notes that are attached to these lessons. Let's have a look at an example, though, when there is no comparison. This statement here, recently appeared in a French newspaper. We were given a couple of bits of extra information as well. We were told the survey questioned 1,007 people and 44% said the US was a trusted ally. And by inference then, 56% of people do not. We need to see if this 56% from the sample is actually enough for us to conclude that there is a majority, more than 50%, of all French people. There are four things we need to do now. The first thing we need to do is find the margin of error. To work this out, we use the formula of 1 over square root of n, which in this case is 1 over the square root of 1007, which gives us 0.0315 to three significant figures. To make this into a percentage, we times by 100, which gives us 3.15%. The second thing we need to do is construct the confidence interval. Our percentage from the survey was 56%, plus or minus that 3.15%. That gives us a lower bound of 52.9% and an upper bound of 59.1%. The third thing we need to do is interpret what this means. We can say with 95% confidence that the percentage of French who do not see the US as a trusted ally is somewhere between 52.9% and 59.1%.
The phrase, we can say with 95% confidence, doesn't have to be stated that way, but we do need some indication of uncertainty, as we can never be 100% confident about the values. We could say something like, it's a fairly safe bet, or I'm pretty sure. The final thing we need to do is make a judgement. The percentage of French who don't see the US as a trusted ally could only be as low as 52.9%. And so this confidence interval does support a claim of over 50%, as implied by the majority statement in the article. It's really important you keep these last two as separate sentences, as that's something the markers have specifically said, as often when people combine them into one sentence, they end up mixing them up and don't say everything that they need to say in order to get the marks. Thank you.